What's up my favorite helicopter enthusiasts? Certainly got an interesting one for you today because today we're gonna be looking at the Curdy Zephyr if I am saying that correct and maybe I'm the only one who thinks it also sounds like you're saying dirty diaper and this dirty diaper or Curdy Zephyr is a helicopter that I certainly think has been getting a lot of attention lately and besides being a great little two-seat single turbine engine helicopter this helicopter also happens to be what I would actually consider the safest helicopter in the world and this has to do with the fact that this is actually the only helicopter with a parachute. Yep, this helicopter actually has a parachute that lives right above the main rotor of this helicopter. And in case of many emergencies, you can deploy this parachute and obviously make it safely back to the ground. And since this is certainly the most interesting feature of this helicopter, we'll be getting more into this later in the video. But if you're new here and don't know me, my name is James Bodie and you are watching Relative Motion. This is the channel all about showing you the most interesting places in the world and the best means to get you there. And if you do find this video interesting at any point, I would certainly hope you consider subscribing down below because that's the best way to help more videos like this come your way. Here we go. Surprisingly, at least to me, the Curdy Zephyr was fairly hard to find information on. And to be honest, I'm not even totally sure if this helicopter is available for sale yet or not. But just like in all my videos, I'm going to try and give you the most accurate information I think there is. But as always, if there's anything incorrect about this information, please feel free to let everyone know down in the comments below. It first flew back in 2017, and by 2018 they had two flying around. And it does sound like in 2022 they'll be selling five helicopters, which are at a assume are in the experimental category. The interesting part is, if you purchase these helicopters, I think they'll actually be in basically kit form, and you'll have to go to the factory though to build this helicopter. And the numbers I heard, where if you are able to buy this helicopter in kit form, it's going to be around $300,000. Versus if you want to buy it completely assembled, you might be looking more around $500,000 to $600,000. Now, while I'm unsure of regulations around the world, and the US, right off the bat, for its weight, is going to have to be a fully type certified aircraft if they do want this helicopter to be fully certified in the US. Which it sounds like they do. So I'm sure time will tell what this exact certification will be in the United States. And I guess I wouldn't be surprised honestly if they just ended up leaving it as experimental. Because a full type certificate can get very expensive. But I think you might expect to see deliveries of this plane, especially to the United States potentially somewhere between 2024 and 2027. However, I certainly do believe these don't end up being type certified. That half a million dollars for a two-seat helicopter is certainly a lot of money. And while this two-seat helicopter does have a turbine engine, which of course I'm always gonna say has many benefits, but the biggest downside is an increase in cost. But even with this turbine engine, like I said, if it ends up not certified, I think half a million dollars is getting pretty expensive. But if they do end up with that full type certification, I think they'll be able to justify that half million dollars certainly a little easier. And especially to me when you start looking at the stats of this helicopter. Because I realize, while it still is a small helicopter, I would still say it's fairly slow even with that turbine engine. And if you have been following along in relative motion, you might have a guess as to why this helicopter is fairly slow, even with a turbine engine. And I would certainly think a lot of that has to do with the fact this helicopter still has a two-bladed rotor system. I don't want to knock the price of the Zypher too much. Because I will admit, this seems like a very nice product with very high quality materials used to produce it. Its turbine engine, for example, is made by the fairly small company PBS, and it's certainly one of the better small turbine power plants available for a small helicopter like this. And another spot, you can really see their attention to detail. I think besides the fact it really is a great looking helicopter in general, is that you can see this attention to detail putting in a decent sized cargo compartment in the back. I would say relative to the size this helicopter is. Because often, especially in small helicopters, a cargo compartment is often overlooked and I certainly think is always welcome to make a helicopter a lot more functional. But maybe where you can see this attention to detail more than anything in this helicopter 
is as far as I know, the industry first of actually putting a parachute on the helicopter itself, which I would say has many obvious advantages, especially when you're flying through the air. But to address maybe the first downside, and I suppose the elephant in the room, or more specifically, the now elephant sitting on top of this helicopter, is maybe the aesthetic disadvantage it now has, having this giant lump above the rotor. And while I'll always admit looks are always subjective, I do think maybe, objectively, most people would argue adding this giant lump above the helicopter doesn't necessarily make it look as sleek as it could be, especially with the already great sleek and Italian lines this helicopter has. And I certainly think putting that parachute up there maybe is a little unsightly, and almost reminds me of some giant radar dish or something that you might even see on a military helicopter. But if you can get over the looks, putting a parachute on your helicopter, because I have to admit, I can't think of a better place to actually put the parachute, because it is a little inconvenient really needing the parachute to be above the rotor, to be effective at increasing the safety. And on top of having this giant lump there, I also think this contributes to the fairly slow speed of this helicopter, especially for having that turbine engine. And I suppose I also get maybe one of the biggest misconceptions of helicopters out of the way if you are fairly unfamiliar with them. And that is, if an engine fails and is no longer able to produce power for a helicopter, most of the time it is actually able to enter into what is called an auto rotation, which is actually a way to keep the rotor blades spinning and glide safely back to the ground. So you might be asking, if helicopters almost have a parachute built in, why might you want to build a second means of landing into a helicopter? Well, very similar to an airplane, once you lose power on your aircraft, you're going to start slowly descending towards the ground. And while certainly you usually have much better landing options in a helicopter in this situation, sometimes based on where you're going or the desired mission of that aircraft, you might be put in a position where there could be not very good spots to land. I think one of the most obvious examples of this is if you're flying over a dense forest. And while again, I'm not a pilot, I have to imagine in reality, if you're over a dense forest and your engine does quit in a helicopter, no matter where you go to, you're still gonna have to have a crash landing when you finally end up landing in the trees. And I certainly think a situation like this is where a helicopter with a parachute could really come in handy. Not only to hopefully make this crash landing a little slower of an impact, I would imagine if you actually deploy the parachute soon enough, even with the rotor spooling down from full power, with the amount of hang time you're gonna have with the parachute until you reach the ground, that's gonna give plenty of time for the rotor to spool down. And I think this is another huge advantage to this parachute on this helicopter. And having this rotor spool down, I think is a huge advantage to also minimizing potential injuries and damage on the ground. And of course, possibly death. Because I think one of the most dangerous parts of a helicopter crash is if the rotor is spinning at full speed and does contact something there's huge centrifugal forces on that rotor, which of course will make the rotor come apart in pieces very quickly. Okay Rick, I know this is your first day, but we got a big load of these water barrels here and we gotta get them there. Now I realize there's a helicopter in the street, but we're gonna try and go around it. Well gee boss, uh, I don't know, there's a helicopter in the street, we probably should wait. No way man, I got a load of these big blue water jugs and we gotta go. I'm just gonna go for it. Boss, don't do it. You're not gonna make it boss. Don't do it, don't try it! Ah! Jesus Christ, holy smoke sauce, Batman! Oh, oh, it's over. Oh, I really hope my blue water jugs are alright. And these pieces become very dangerous because they carry a high amount of energy with them because of this high amount of centrifugal energy stored in the rotor. And if you're familiar with what shrapnel is, it almost acts like that, flying out in different directions. So of course, for obvious reasons, this can be very dangerous. And like I said, if the rotor is able to spool down, which would likely happen with this parachute, especially if you're landing in trees, where a crash and contact with the rotor blades is of course most likely gonna happen. I have to imagine you have better odds with this parachute, but it's not only losing power over bad landing zones, that this parachute would probably be able to save you in other circumstances as well. I think most notably, damage to the tail, which again, some helicopters, if you are a skilled pilot, are able to land without tail rotors. However, this can be even a more dangerous situation. So if you are a less skilled pilot, or you just want to take pilot error out of it, being able to pull a parachute could be a lot better of an option. But I suppose also gets me to another point worth mentioning, that these parachutes aren't steerable, 
And so obviously, depending on where you pull the parachute, you don't really have any control really over where you do end up landing now, which could also potentially put you in some dangerous situations. Like for example, maybe if you ended up over water and the helicopter was not equipped to land in water. But I have to imagine in general, having this parachute versus not having it definitely increases your odds of making it safely back to the ground. And I think in a similar vein to what we were just talking about, being a better option for less skilled pilots and a good option for when you are in, I guess what I would call more sticky situations. I think this could also maybe be a great option actually for a trainer. Although I have to admit, the biggest problem with it is it's going to be one of the most expensive options. Again, mostly having to do with the fact it has that turbine engine. But if you can afford it, I have to imagine this could be one of the safest helicopters you could learn to fly in. And I mean, even on top of it, while I admit this is very rare, if you're flying around someone who doesn't even know how to fly in this helicopter, and the pilot suddenly died from let's say a heart attack, if the occupant knew about the parachute, they would most likely be able to just pull it, and I would imagine have a much better chance of making it back to the ground than they would trying to figure out how to fly a helicopter. 559 or Delta Whiskey. 559 or Delta Whiskey, Mommy Center. Here's your loud and clear, how me? I got declared emergency. My pilot's unconscious. I need help up here. 559 or Delta Whiskey has an unconscious pilot. He needs uh, help. You want me to put him back on you? I need help. He's uh, just in my... 559 or Delta Whiskey, say your intentions. I need to get this thing on the ground. I'm flying to King Air. Admittedly though, I do think inherently because of the design of putting this parachute on this helicopter. Because, like I'll show you here, to make this possible and to have the parachute not rotate above the rotor, the rotor shaft almost has to be hollow on the inside. And they put a strong non-rotating shaft all the way through the rotor that sticks out of the top and is where they attach the parachute. And then the shaft comes out of the bottom of the rotor and I'd imagine is attached very strongly to the airframe. Because of course there is a large amount of force put on all these parts when the parachute is deployed. Which gets me to the point that unfortunately this parachute on this helicopter might not be as useful in some of the situations you would really want it because mostly of where it's attached and the fact that the rotor itself is one of the things that can be potentially damaged and is maybe the most critical part of the entire helicopter because if it is damaged this is one of the most likely situations where you're able to not do what I mentioned earlier and auto rotate down to the ground safely and most likely you will dramatically fall out of the air which is one of the worst situations of course for a helicopter and like I also mentioned earlier because of these huge forces going on in the rotor itself when a rotor is damaged and does come apart it's typically very catastrophic and can cause a lot of damage so depending on the strength of the shaft that goes through the rotor I would imagine if the rotor damage is catastrophic enough it could shear the shaft off and basically cause you to be in the same situation again because, of course, now you're not attached to the parachute and will fall very quickly to the ground in, of course, a manner that's going to make it so pretty much no one will survive. However, this is mostly speculation, and I'd hope when they did design this parachute, they built this into consideration, and I hope made this internal stationary shaft very strong. So, of course, it could potentially survive heavy amounts of rotor damage, like, for example, a potential mass separation, which, if you haven't paying attention to this channel, probably know is one of the most unfortunate characteristics of a two-bladed rotor system that this helicopter has. And so, having the parachute on the internal side of the rotor I think it's questionable whether this parachute would actually allow you to survive a mass separation. But I suppose your odds are better than if you didn't have a parachute. So admittedly, for some of these reasons, I think that might be why this is the first helicopter that has a parachute. Versus parachutes being in aviation on airplanes have already become a well-established feature in the industry, especially for smaller planes. Typically, the smaller the plane gets. And admittedly, I do think a parachute in an airplane does make more sense, but mostly for the difference from airplanes to helicopters in the fact, like I had said, a helicopter is able to auto-rotate. And because of this, I think it gives it a much better ability to find a landing zone in an emergency where airplanes are gonna need a much longer distance to actually get the airplane back on the ground. And you can see this from the obvious fact that airplanes are limited to airports where helicopters are not. 
But if you happen to be familiar with the airplane parachutes, you might be aware of maybe the last downside, and even maybe the biggest misconception about these parachutes, is this parachute is not an instant get out of jail free card. And while I'm not sure the distances off the top of my head of airplanes, but this parachute, for it to actually work, this helicopter needs to be at least 450 feet off the ground. So if you deploy it at any point before that, it might actually slow your speed down some, but it might not be enough to actually save you. So besides the stuff I've already pointed out, there certainly are some danger zones to even be aware of if you have a parachute. But ultimately, I don't think there can be any denying that overall this parachute, if you don't let it get to your head, certainly could make this one of the safest helicopters in the world. Well, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And as always, I certainly hope you found this helicopter as interesting as I do. If you did, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up down below. And feel free to leave a comment down below. And until I see you next time, my name's James Bodie, and you've been watching Relative Motion.